so I guess we'll start with the queen. Oh! <laughs> It's like a magic trick. Was there an endorphin it, rush yeah, the first time was. that worked? It was really sweet. I, I ran around showing my parents <laughs> and my, my brothers. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Hey, everybody. Adam Savage in my cave with YouTuber Riley. Riley, I just want to start at the most ground level. Tell me about your channel. Tell me about what you do. Uh, yeah, so it's it's called Works by Design, and I just I make things that I find interesting to myself. It's mostly mechanical things. Mm -hmm. I have watched them all. Really? Okay. Yeah, no, so you reached out to us, but I had just watched the video that we're going to talk about the day before you reached out to us. I'm a fan, and I mean, I'm also a machinist, so I feel like I know some of your pain. Sure, yeah. Uh, what, caused, what, what was the reason you started a YouTube channel? Uh, so it actually started as sort of a way, a means to an end. So it I had this idea and I, I just, I never could really finish things. So I wanted to post something to- To add know. stakes. Exactly, exactly. So that, that actually worked really well. And the first video I posted did well enough to kind of confirm to keep going on that you're path. on the right path yeah so. and did you get to you finish that project i did yeah yep so <laughs> <laughs> okay so tell me about this project um you you have a long-term interest in chess not actually no no I, no i'm not I, I never was a big chess fan i played maybe a game or two when i was a kid but uh i actually came across another video by a different youtuber uh polyfjord i okay. believe his, his channel is called and he made this pawn that transformed into a queen, but it was all done in CGI. So it was like blender stuff. He would Gotcha. And it was and did it adhere to the laws of physics or was it like R2D2's rockets? Like it just didn't quite fit. It was like R2D 2s rockets. Okay. I mean it was really cool. I gotta give him credit. It, yeah. it inspired this whole thing. But, um, but you wanted to know if that was possible yeah, he, IRL. He made it real enough looking where I was like, oh I could, that's that's possible. <laughs> so, so in chess, if you get a pawn to the other side of your board you can promote it to a different piece. Usually a queen, but usually. you can promote it to any piece. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's that'd be really cool if you could do that by itself automatically. Right. And so that's that's like that was the level. goal is yeah. a, a, a chess a pawn that converts into any other piece. Of, yep. Not every other piece, but any, any other piece. piece. Yes. Okay. So the original goal was, you know, I was thinking maybe it could do that, but it just got way too complex to to turn into each and every piece from one one pawn. So. But the biggest, the first problem to solve was the the latching and unlatching yeah, that just, allowed this mechanism to do its thing. Of course, yeah, and it was mainly like trying to figure out how to fit, you know, the simplest mechanism within that because right. it's such a small, so it's such a small piece. So I was trying to figure out how to do it with like a single spring. Um, so in the first video I had, I had a bunch of different uh, springs that would kind of push out different pieces of, of each pawn. I don't oh. have, <laughs> oh, no, I see it. That's all right, it's, I've got a hundred <laughs> of them. And so this has to do a tremendous amount of work. It has to latch and unlatch and create enough momentum yeah. that all the rest of the latching and unlatching that might be ancillary to that happens at the same time. Yeah, That's so, a, so did you start just by hoping to get a certain amount of throw from your latch release? Basically, I was, it's just trial and error. Yeah, and oh my like, gosh. You know, just, I ordered probably hundreds of different spring just to test out the, the different, you know, if it would work in this yeah. speed or not, but. Um, how much of this problem solving was done in 3D printing and how much was done in actual machining? Uh, it was all 3D printing because okay. uh, at this point I didn't have a, you know, I still don't have a, a CNC machine of my own. So everything was 3D printing. And uh, I was actually initially hoping to make it out of metal. Yeah. So I was initially designing the prints to be, you know, more circular and have, you know, machining possibilities. But right, right. I, I did some of those online quotes and it was just uh, way too Astronomical. Yeah, yeah. Fair, so, fair. But um, I mean, that brings us to... Oh my God. More of the, uh, the metal version. So metal 3D printing is a thing. And so... And this, this is, is metal 3D printed? Yeah, this is uh, stainless. Uh, oh I think God. it's DM, DMLS, I believe it is. So this was sort of a, a prototype before the, the final version here. And you can see some of the, more of the mechanisms. It's almost exactly the same as the plastic version. Oh my God, but. Riley. So am I correct that the activation is these two magnets are a little raised off the surface, but when you put them, it pulls them down and releases these? Exactly, yeah. Amazing. Exactly. Yeah, they're just little ramps on those magnets that push those little pins apart and the pins are connected to those jaws. So. 
And just like for people who problem solve, like how many iterations of just that arrangement, like must yeah. have been dozens and dozens, dozens and dozens. Of... Yeah, for sure. Yep. It was, you know, I had probably 20 or 30 of just full little assemblies of these trying to figure out that. I mean, just that right there is tactily delicious. Oh yeah. Right? Like my fingers just love handling that. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Tell me about your engineering background. <laughs> uh, so I went to school for about a year in engineering and yeah. then I, I dropped to industrial design. Uh, just, I didn't like the math. Oh, fair, so, okay. Um, but I, I, I did a lot of, you know, my dad was a huge uh, builder and he would build things. And uh, I went, I, I had a job in uh, California that did a lot of manufacturing stuff. So yeah. familiar with machines and stuff like that, but. So within your design charge here, you, you're trying to fit the, uh, the possibility of all the other pieces in each pawn. It, it had to have been super iterative. I mean, like, what was the hardest one to get right, the look of the secondary yeah. chess piece for um, you? Definitely the knight, and you can see why. Oh! <laughs> Dude, oh my god, the difference. Like, there's oh, sure. no mechanical <laughs> symmetry. They're all completely separate sets of problems to solve. Yeah, they share similar bases, of course, but. That's, the, that's the bishop. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so this was by far the hardest, and it uh, you know it takes a little bit of work to you know see the knight there, but I kind of look at it as like plates of armor unfolding, uh huh, uh huh, or like maybe a little bit of a Roman oh, uh, man. plumage there. But um, is there? Are you? <laughs> so where are you at with this? Are you done? I don't ever want to look at these again. Or are you thinking about maybe releasing the files, making these a product? What are your uh, ideas? Yeah, so I've released the files, um, but. I'm also looking into, you know, sort of ways to maybe injection mold some of these parts. Uh huh. Uh, I still haven't figured that out yet. It's, uh, <laughs> that's a large, long, long process ahead to, to think about that. But so, has anyone taken your files and made successfully made one? Uh, yeah, there are, have been a few people that have successfully made it. So <laughs> that's, that's um, a promising sign. I'm also curious if you've thought about scaling up. I have thought about it. I haven't done that yet. No, because I, mean, I, I could imagine it could be really fun to play with some bigger, that's true. bigger yeah, pieces. That is true. Maybe I should do that next. <laughs> Just being able to see all all of this possibility mechanically within this one shape sure. with what one, two, three, four completely different executions. Man, it's it's beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it. It's and honestly having having watched the video, like it's ten times better to see it in person than I was hoping it would be. Yeah. I think this was like, when I finally was able to make it out of metal, that was kind of a full circle moment because I, I wanted to start, you know, with the machined piece and yeah. being able to finally do that was awesome. I think that people also might not realize that like when you're, when you make something this small and it doesn't work, figuring out why is not just like going and finding the part that's rubbing because yeah. at this scale, it's really hard. Am I oh, right? For sure. Yeah. I probably should have made it twice as big to start <laughs> yeah. with, but and then bring it down exactly yeah um you also kind of came up with another version of chess oh yeah I with these pieces will you way. talk about that yeah of course so because these pieces uh they don't all transform into you know any possible one they kind of are locked to their transform transformed piece so uh in order to make that more interesting and because promotions don't quite happen as often as I'd like them to happen. Right, yeah, it's like once every however yeah. many games. Yep, so the, the different variation here is I've moved these, uh, the promotion squares rather to these. The dark squares on the middle ranks. Yes, exactly. Okay. And that way, uh, Promotion happens a lot faster. It's a little more of a yeah. That would I mean yeah. that would because the whole first part of the game is about controlling this space. Exactly. This makes that a much more hairy proposition right away. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And then uh, you know there's a whole level of you know what pawn you are gonna watch right? out for yeah. later. Oh right, because each one does has a different promotion. Sure. Yeah. Well, so does that? Have you discovered which pawn you want to promote first? I I have it. No, I'm, <laughs> like I said, I'm I'm terrible at chess. So I brought it to the chess club here in San Francisco and uh, that was a lot of fun because the, the guys there and girls there, they, they figured out a lot of 
uh, potential moves that oh, made that's a lot more great. sense. But um, one thing I have always found when I go this deep into an exploration is that I put the video up and like the third comment is something like, "I can't believe I didn't think of that." Yeah. Have you been getting some suggestions that didn't occur to you? Yes, definitely. <laughs> like, uh, specifically on the the night here. Yeah. Um, the night is usually sort of asymmetrical, even in you know the this right. direction as well. Mm -hmm. And so you know I have these panels fold out this way. But instead, you know, someone would say, like, maybe you folded it out from the top instead, and just right, right. little, like, changes that would help that kind of look more asymmetrical. Because it but is the most asymmetrical exactly. of all the pieces. Yeah. Bishop's a, a, a far distant second. Yes, yes. So. so you may do some redesign on the night. It's possible. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> In your experience, do you need a certain amount of downtime after execution to, before you go to iteration 2.0? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even coming here right now, it's it's been a little bit long enough where I'm I'm like, oh, I gotta start trying to remember what what I've done here. So. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. But Riley, it's it's deeply inspiring. It's marvelously absurd, and it's so beautifully executed. It's just gorgeous. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Man. I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's not the last toy execution idea that you bring us, uh, and maybe we can collaborate at some point. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, yeah, good. I love that. Such a pleasure, man. Thanks. Pleasure's mine. I really appreciate you watching all of that. And if you are pondering right now what to get for the maker, tinkerer, or general obsessive in your life, or what to get yourself, I'd like to humbly suggest our brand new Savage Industries Shop Apron. Its predecessor is one of the most popular things we have ever manufactured, and we are still selling them, but now we've added to it. We've simplified it, we've lowered the cost, and we've made an entry-level apron uh, still manufactured in the United States, still made of upcycled materials, and I swear this might become my new daily wear. Get yours today at adamsavage.com. Yeah, there we go.